just getting ready. SAG, ATA, Nader, what does it all mean? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey there, it's Adria Coleman, founder of ActingResourceGuru.com, and today we're gonna to talk about what the heck these categories of agents mean. So we have SAG franchised agents, we have ATA agents, we have the National Association of Talent Representatives. Like, what are all these things, and what the heck do they mean? So I'm going to unapologetically read from my notes for this one because I don't want to mess anything up. I don't want to have SAG calling me being like, no, this is wrong. If you have any questions about any of this, don't ask me because I'm not an expert. Please call SAG. They have people there who are paid to answer your questions and you will get your answer. Okay, cool. So let's get started. So what is SAG franchise? What does that mean? So a franchise agent is basically someone who's entered into an agreement with SAG-AFTRA. Um, and they have to abide by certain terms and conditions and they have to uphold the agency contracts as well. So this is from the SAG website, guys, directly from the website. Please remember that SAG-AFTRA members working in SAG-AFTRA's jurisdiction are required to choose as their agents, only those that are franchised by the union. Hmm. So if you're a SAG-AFTRA actor, you are supposed to have a SAG franchised agent. Just FYI. Okay. So how do agents meet requirements for franchising? We've had a, we had a video in the past where we talked about how SAG, one of the things that SAG does is basically vet agents and make sure that they're legit, which is pretty cool, right? Um, so they have to have a minimum of one year of experience in the industry. Um, they have to include letters of recommendation from recognized industry professionals. Those can include SAG members. So if you're a SAG after member, you could write a letter of recommendation for an agent who wanted to become SAG franchised, for example. They have to provide a letter from their financial institution, basically proving that they have an operating account, that they have a trust account, so they can't just run away with your money. Um, they have to have a state talent agency license. They can't have a virtual or home office or PO box. So I don't know if you've ever been on the rep search and have like gone to do drop-offs to agencies and found out that their agency was actually a PO box. Yeah, it's happened to me. They can't do that. So SAG actually has a, a checklist of um, <laughs> basically the office inspection process that you have to go through to become a SAG franchised agent. They have to be in a commercial office building, which is kind of cool. It has to only be used for business purposes. So you can't just be like, Oh, I'm an agent. Come to my house and have a meeting. No, not going to work. There have to be two rooms. Like there has to be a reception area and there has to be an, an office with like a divider. The agency name has to actually appear on the building directory. There has to be proper signage. So basically they're just making sure that all this is legit. They have to stay open during business hours, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of nice that if you know you have a SAG franchised agent, you know, all of this stuff is happening. Um, they also cannot recommend photographers and websites and workshops and, and get kickbacks for that. Um, so there are just some kind of like sleazy things that actors want to be on the lookout for that SAG after a franchise agents are not allowed to do. So that's nice. So what is ATA and Nader? Now these are trade organizations, slightly different, right? SAG after is a union for actors. ATA and Nader are trade organizations for talent agencies. So from the ATA's website, they say ATA has been the official trade association of talent agencies across the U S responsible for legislation, advocacy, and negotiating agency franchise agreements with the major entertainment guilds, including SAG, AFTRA, SAG, AFTRA, WGA, DGA, and AEA. ATA's collective voice provides strong and effective advocacy for its members in all matters related to the talent agency business. The association's 100 plus agency members represent over 90% of working artists. Okay. So what does this mean for us? Before I go into that, I'm going to talk about Nader real quick. Where are my notes? I'm so disorganized here. Okay. Nader is the National Association of Talent Representatives. It's a not-for-profit trade organization serving the various needs of licensed talent agencies in the New York metropolitan area. So, um, ATA is described as Nader's strategic partner. Um, basically they represent agencies primarily located in and around NYC. Okay, cool. So the reason why this is important is because you, whether you're signed with an agency who is SAG franchised or one who is ATA or Nader, may be signing a different contract. And the ATA agencies will usually use a general services agreement. And that contract, ladies and gentlemen, is 
not very specific at all and does not was not written to protect the interests of actors. The agency contract that you would sign from a SAG franchised agent, however, has been completely reviewed and vetted by SAG's attorneys and does represent the interests of actors. So before you sign a contract, I recommend that you learn about this. And one way to do that is with the agent action guide. So as an addendum to the last version of the guide, I added a complete workup on all the things that you might need to consider amending in the general services agreement if you're going to sign one. And I feel like it's useful for all actors to kind of be aware of what's going on and what these contracts mean, <laughs> what you're actually signing away when you sign a contract. So grab a copy of that. And if you have any questions about that, again, call SAG. <laughs> okay. I hope this helps and I'll see you on the next episode of Groups for Actors. Bye.